Hello and good evening, everyone. It is your good friend, Mr. Eric Norton. I'm here with my new good friend, Mr. David Sanchez, uh, an up-and-coming emerging artist, and I'm happy to bring him to you here tonight. But he's got ties into the hobby with, with comic books, with breaking. He's got a Twitch feed. He's all over the place. But before we get to him, I want to mention our sponsors, Filth Bomb Breaks and, of course, Pastime Marketplace. If you use code Beckett Live at Pastime Marketplace, you can get yourself 15% off a graded card case. David, I love when I meet a new old friend. And when we met each other on Saturday, I felt like yeah. I, had, I had known you for a while. What's up, man? How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you for um, for for having me here, and thank you for just being so awesome and and bringing your son along too, and and just hanging out at the booth. It was cool. I know I was kind of I looked lonely there, but <laughs> I was uh I was I had a lot of fun. It was great. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. I'm I'm glad that we were I'm glad we met. Uh first of all, first top topic that we gotta get to is your beard, man. It's strong. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> you putting product in that? What do you got going on? Um just nothing really. It's just the my I come from a long line of beards, so okay. it's kind of the genetics, but I, I guess, but I just uh I don't like shaving it. If I shaved it, it's I'm gonna yeah, probably okay scare kid or something so you gotta get some product though man you gotta get that in man <laughs> i get used to use oil and balm and all that stuff but then it yeah. got to the point where it was like just shave 20 seconds off my morning i can get get to work 20 <laughs> seconds earlier so awesome awesome guys uh get your questions in for uh david if you like comic books if you're a fan of comic books uh he, he's there for you but uh if you like hey, art he is here for you as well jordan uh looks like uh, is Jordan your brother? No, he. Yeah, well, technically he is. Uh, okay. He is. He and I worked together at a at at a dealership, and he was really the big motivational push for me to to become a professional artist. So, if I had not met him, I probably wouldn't have uh, thought about it as as hard and often as I had at the time. All right. All right. That that's fair. That's fair. Um, we now here on Bay Live we talk. We do talk a lot about sports cards, and the reason I thought that you would be a great fit here, because not only do you do the comic book art, you also do sports art, but you have a history with sports cards and breaking as well. Uh, yeah. Can you can you tell me a little bit about your history on that side of the hobby uh, with collecting? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, for the most part, I've always been the type to try to earn a living outside of my living, um, mm -hmm. like a side hustle, and, and I was always taught to work hard and and uh, I was blessed to have a brother-in-law who was really into the hobby and he collected and I collected when I was younger um, roughly following my dad when he chased around the 91 92 93 94 for deck sets baseball and um, you know and uh, I think he stopped collecting when he pulled the Nolan Ryan auto one of uh, <laughs> out of uh, 200 I think 2350 of them I guess they were but he stopped getting into it so much that we started getting into toys. But as I went, gotten older, my brother-in-law would always jump in his breaks and he would tell me, you know, all the great things that can come of it. And mm -hmm. I, I told him like, Hey man, let's, let's give it a shot. And, uh, I'm not doing anything. You're not doing anything. And why not? <laughs> Worst they can say is, uh, we suck and we can stop and, <laughs> you know, but, uh, it, it really lasted. Um, uh, the group that we created was more primarily done through Facebook and sure. um, it was done through eBay mainly to start. And we built a pretty hefty following from the eBay uh, sales. And I was breaking through other, uh, I just started doing it more and I was breaking through other groups and um, gained a lot of friends through there, added them to my group and, and, um, and built it so much that it was uh, it was starting to become a little bit more in the way of what I wanted to do um, as a career. What I wanted to do was this, was draw and be an artist. I've been doing it for a long time now. I never really showed anybody and didn't think anybody really cared about what I, what I can draw and how I drew. And, and um, honestly, I just never was in that feedback mode. I tell people this all the time, just never was in that feedback mode. So the response that I gotten from that was pretty overwhelming. And um, I thought it was time for me to step away, but I ended up uh, letting one of my members of that group actually take over the whole thing. And uh, 
he's built it way further than I could have ever. And, um, and uh, it's uh, to this day, it's actually going really strong. Been up for two years now. Uh, running it's new, but it's it's uh, it's strong and consistent. And they have somebody that just has a tremendous passion for the hobby and and the, and the product. So awesome! What's up, Jason? Thanks for hopping on with us tonight. Uh, all right. So, do you mind tell us the name of that group, just so that I can yeah. know? Which one? It's uh, it's DNR Breaks. Okay. Um, the the D was for David. The R was for my brother-in-law Richard. So uh, we decided to go with that. But we've been operational for two years. Um, my buddy Matt Myers takes over right now, and um, I've been toying with the idea of going back and just doing a break here and there. But I kind of just like doing what I'm doing right now. Sure. And don't really see myself taking that on anytime soon. Uh, with with what you're doing right now, let's give a shout out to uh, Chris and the and the team over at Pastime. Uh, yeah. Just I love that. Uh, what's up, Jason? Hello again. I love uh, I love Pastime. We were talking off air. It's right across the street from my son my son's uh, homeschool uh, place that he goes to, and it's a lot of fun. And right right across the street from Pastime is another great place, uh, Founded Electronics, where you can just go and get all your old uh, Nintendo games and stuff like that, and uh, have a lot of fun. But uh, so tell me about how you got introduced to doing artwork on comic yeah, for comic books. I'm sorry. sorry about that. I'm trying to get That's it shared. Right. <laughs> That's all right. So, you, so tell me about how you got started uh, with Chris and the, and the pastime team over there. So I, um, I've been drawn for a while and uh, I've been, like I said, I was only drawn just because I, it was something therapeutic for me. I really just didn't like to uh, to just sit and draw something small. I'd like to really jump into what I was doing at the time and, and, and looking at and trying to test myself every single time. So I would start with something really small, like a flower, and then I would move on to uh, um, a bouquet of flowers. And then I would try to, to take that a step even further and do... Um, you know, like statues, um, you know, family portraits, stuff that was really hard for me to, to take on. And, um, and, uh, I just, I was drawing one day and I, I drew a, um, a picture of Ezekiel Elliott. And, um, that picture really just kind of launched everything. Honestly, I posted on my Facebook page. I had a hundred likes within like a couple hours or so. And, um, and yeah, and it just, I wasn't expecting that at all. And, and, um, Chris and Julian and Ryan and all them guys, they, they really, they knew I could draw, but they didn't know I could draw the way I did. And then they were really just trying to force me out of my shell. Cause I, I really just didn't want to draw for anybody. I didn't want to show anybody anything. You know, I was just crazy insecure when it came to it. So I just thought, Hey, I'm just going to do it for me. But you know, I took the plunge and started showing my work off more and I kept getting a lot of requests for my art and, uh, and, um, you know, to this day I do receive a lot of requests and, and, and I like to apologize to everybody. I, I, I'm not as fast as I would like to be. I wish I was, um, but I'm getting there and, um, and, uh, I plan on reopening everything here next month. So please, you know, just hang in there and don't give up on me. Awesome. Yeah. That's great. I want to back up actually a little bit before before you meeting up with the guys with uh, Pastime and uh, shout out to Pastime, big CBCS supporters. We really appreciate the love there. But um, were you self taught or did you go to school for this or like did you just like just pick up a pencil one day and go, I can do this? I, I'm actually self taught. Um, okay. I really didn't go. I, I mean, I went to art classes in college and stuff. When I was playing football, I, I, I took an art class there, and it was. It was really easy, and I didn't really see myself uh, being as challenged as I would like to have been. So I, I really just didn't pay too much attention to it. And in high school, they were like having me paint while everybody was like doing other things, and <laughs> you know. So I was like, "All right, well, I'll do it." Thank you, Jason. Um, and uh, and I would I would just try to, you know, just just try to draw what I saw. And I didn't 
think too hard about it. I just looked at whatever it was I was thinking about drawing and just, just decided to draw. So, I mean, uh, I didn't go to school for any of this. I really just kind of, I tried to look at a picture and try to see if I can make it look exactly like that picture as much as possible. And, and, uh, and that's how it was. I mean, I, I wish I would have gone to school for this, but <laughs> I, uh, I know I just decided to just do it my own. <laughs> now, are you, are you only working in graphite and charcoal? Is that all you're working in right now? For right now, I mean, I'm adding on pastel, like color and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I will be jumping into airbrushing here pretty soon. Uh, and then also oil painting probably within the next two months or so. Um, just because I, I want to give myself a little bit more time to, to study it. And I mean, now I'm like, I'm, there's so many avenues to learn how to draw like on YouTube and all this other stuff. And, and, um, it's just, it's just a perfect avenue to, to kind of figure out what it is that you want to really want to jump into, whether it's charcoal or graphite or, um, or painting. And I think painting would be pretty cool just to, just to try, you know, um, I'm not that great at it. Obviously I'll just keep trying it. And as a hobby for myself, <laughs> you, uh, now, anybody that's familiar with the show knows that we love sports artists. We love artists in general. We've had plenty of them on. Uh, I, I, we were speaking on Saturday, and I, I mentioned James Ferentino to you, and like your ears perked up, and you, you got a little bit excited about uh, the possibility of you maybe even talking about James. Maybe I don't know what was going on, but like obviously you knew his work, and you just mentioned oil painting. That's like a medium that yeah is incredible that he, that, that, um, that he does. And man, I don't know. I don't know about you, but that's not something I want to try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it is. It just like with charcoal and stuff, it, it can be very unforgiving, and um, it could be really relentless, and and, uh, and it could really just be your enemy on any given day. But if you're patient with it, and you're understanding, and you feel like you have a a sense of uh, of uh, connection with what it is you're using the work is really just going to speak for itself afterwards. And, and, uh, and honestly, you really just can't be afraid to fail when it comes to the pieces that you're trying, mm -hmm. whether it's something minute as a, as a flower or something as, as extremely detailed, like the Vatican or whatever the case is, you know, just, just kind of throwing stuff out there. But if you have, you have a, a clear cut understanding as to what it is that you're going to be picking up, whether it's oil painting or pastel or airbrush, then the connection that you're building right at, at that moment will make things, you know, completely uh, in sync and make it completely one, um, a beautiful piece. And two, um, you'll have that sense of achievement afterwards. Yeah. So that is that right there. That piece is like, that took me about five years. Uh, Are you to do. serious? <laughs> yeah. And it doesn't look like it would take somebody five years, but I, I, I pick it up here and there, like the, the pic portrait on the right was something I had started a long time ago and it was just this blank section on the left. And I was like, you know what, let me try something new and different. And, and, um, I want to try to make it just like a collage. I want to make it look as if they're literally right in front of one another and, you know, you know, just trying something different. And, um, yeah, I mean, it came out really well. I, I really was happy with this one. I really was that that original. I, I I still have it, thankfully, and will never let it go. <laughs> you said five years on this. That's not a typical time that you take on a piece, right? No, no, and, and that's kind of my handicap. Um, that has been my handicap. Like I would start for a little bit, then I would stop, and then I'd take a year off and not draw anything. Focus on, you know, what it is I'm dealing with at the time, and. Um, and I was taking care of some some sick folks, and uh, and I really uh, really didn't have much time to, to to think about art at the moment. So it it took a while, but I ended up finishing it here recently, or actually the beginning of this this last year, I think. I see, I'm seeing a lot of cowboy stuff in your work. Is that because you're a homer? Is that what it is? It is honestly. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was cool. It, you know, I saw a photo and it looked super challenging. It was super high def. So, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to try. I can get a lot of the reflection work in it, like the reflective in the helmet, like that part really was where I started. And, um, I would be at a show, my very first unofficial official show 
sitting at the back of the whole thing, uh, just kind of working on this thing for however long the show was. Everybody would just stop and look and stare. And I'm like, hello. <laughs> I was drawing. And um, it took me about 60 hours combined uh, to finish it. So that was wow. pretty cool. That's crazy. Uh, you know, I, I, this Oliver is, is great as well. I want to know, you just, you made a, a great comment here. People just kind of stopping and staring at a show and just kind of looking at you. Do you feel like an animal in a zoo? Uh, <laughs> I've never heard it put that way before. Um, no, not really. I mean, I always try to be as welcoming as I can because I, sure. you know, sometimes people don't really want to mess or bother artists when they're like heads down and, you know, mm -hmm. elbow to, to table kind of putting in that work. Uh, I unfortunately have, or fortunately, uh, have a lot of work to do. So when you saw me, I was actually working on something uh, mm -hmm. at the show and I had, uh, like I said, I was very, I was very uh, left alone at that show. Nobody really <laughs> was there for artwork, but, <laughs> you know, it was, uh, so I had some time to kill and, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's always funny to see people's reaction when they do that, like double take, you know, they just saw my work and they couldn't believe what they're, you know, just, it's always a great feeling. Absolutely. I, it, it's gotta be a great feeling, but I, I stopped here on this Batman because you told me an interesting story about it. Uh, why don't you share uh, the story with uh, our audience about Batman's lips? Yeah. So I was, uh, I had very, I've gone to very few, shows up until that point i went to the watauga uh, christmas con uh that november uh of 2019 then when i got into the new year january we go to albuquerque february we go to victoria uh texas and then in march just before everything happened we go to the north texas comic book show mm -hmm. and i'm sitting there um i'm set up in front of all these other talented artists and i'm like like thinking of the promoter like in my mind i'm like what's wrong with you why would you put me in front of these people <laughs> <laughs> like uh you know you just made me like that much you have to work that much harder now um but everybody was really cool and, and stuff well long story short when i was getting there uh i was i was set up everything was put all up nice and neat this picture was actually uh, the original was there and without knowing that that individual was actually going to be there um until actually until i showed up neil adams himself came up and saw the drawing and he i mean it's neil adams man you know so it's he's a legend in the industry and and just to be even next to the guy talking is uh is an honor in itself so he came up and he just like was hey great work you know the lip on that batman is not really good it needs to be hiked up a little bit more but uh, but great work. And I was like, oh, okay. Thank you. I know I suck. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, appreciate it. Oh, that's nuts. <laughs> Neil Adams, uh, I mean, he, he probably best known for Raja Ghoul, I would guess. It just, but I mean, he's all over yeah. the place. Uh, he's everywhere, man. And, and, yeah. and he should have seen his booth. His booth took up some serious real estate. Like, really? it was, it, he had like, I think, 10 tables all combined and, books and artwork and stuff that he did and, and i walked up to him twice and i guess he was just like in a very friendly mood because he just talked and talked and talked and it was such an honor such a nice guy and and um and he was just one person of the many talent talented artists that were there but um yeah, that really that moment stood out for me quite a bit i can see where it would have um, I, you know, I said probably best known for Raj Agul, but you know, also Green Lantern and he's done some work in Batman and obviously oh, yeah. as well. Um, he's all over the place. I don't want to insult any comic book fans that might be watching, uh, and cause they, they'll get at you, man. They will definitely, definitely get at you. Uh, so what's been like, who are some of your favorite characters to draw? I mean, I know that, that, you know, you, you take commissions and you'll draw pretty much what you're, what you're asked to, but. Who, yeah. who, what character like really brings it out in you? Um, honestly, it's it's the one that you you would least expect, um, and it, it actually is Batman. To be honest with you, um, it? that one is it's because there's so many artists that have done Batman, and it's it's hard to kind of try to bring a natural realism to it. Um, 
especially in my eyes and that and of course one of the other ones um one of the other ones that i was really i had it recently done that really just took a lot out of me was spawn um mm. and i drew that one no references you know it's um, didn't go off of the pr promo material from when the movie came out i went off of just what i thought um i would be able to to see um and uh it came out good it came out really good and, and um i know had i done it a little bit more i don't know uh, i i would say i really want another try at that at that character um i need i have my own personal redemption list of characters that i've drawn that i, I felt i did horrible at but everybody was just really nice and just said great job you know but so i'm working that list down and trying to get uh trying to get to where it's where i don't feel like i should go back and touch that character because of this reason or that reason you know it's just i want to i want to draw them because they're awesome to draw because they all are i mean especially this one um this one this one took a lot out of me as well because if you can tell with all the hair and all that the beard and you know the effect from the lighting and, and just trying to it's the first time I've actually done this drawing and the first time I've drawn something like this, and especially on a comic book, you know, I would much rather preferred like 11 by 14 or, or a bigger piece, but it, this was for a good friend. And he, um, he was, he just, he was at that show and he was like, I just want a Logan with the cigar in his mouth, old man. And let me, uh, uh, let me see what you can do. And yeah. I showed him this and he was like, That's All right. I'm. I was. Uh, I'm. I'm proud of my son anyway. Because, I, I, but I, I was incredibly proud of my son uh, that he didn't flip out when he saw this uh, on Saturday. Because, <laughs> like, th he loves Wolverine, but like, Old yeah. Man Logan is like his jam. So he. Uh, I'm. Su I'm surprised that he didn't just like nab this off the table, and take off running. And I was going to have to go chase him down. I'm, I'm a fat guy. <laughs> I don't want to do that. But he was really excited about this Logan piece. Uh, it's it's an incredible piece. That beard work, man. How much time did you go went into that beard work? Um, so how that works? Give me just a second here. My dog is trying to join in the interview. Uh, <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, so the the beard, it really just took quite a bit of. I want to say just your standard, um, standard time, like an hour, two hours, because all I was doing was just, um. All I was doing was just taking charcoal powder okay. and drawing on the area where the beard would go. And then I would just take an eraser and just make little strokes to symbolize okay. you know, each hair, each hair strand. So and that photo was very uh very grainy. So I had to try my best to make it look uh, as as real as possible. Um so I was pretty proud of myself. I even said not bad for your first time, you know. So I was like, <laughs> get my own credit, critic, and everything. So that's funny. You know, I, what's up, Ronnie? I, I'm gonna skip ahead here to uh, first of all, I love both of these jokers. I I stopped on this one because it's the latest, you know, the latest film. But man, yeah. this, this Heath Ledger right here is incredible. Uh, <laughs> Tell me a little bit about this one because I, I I just I love it. So I I've always been I really like black and gray photos. I really like photographers that symbolize um, just your very dark and ominous feels and and stuff like that. So I've always I, I, I saw this and I wanted to try it, and then I I did I just completely was blind at the fact that I have to draw this shirt and mm -hmm. on the <laughs> and so I was like well. I'm gonna go ahead and start it, see what they say, and and and, and try. I I don't really think too often when it comes to something. If I see something I like, I'll just uh, I just uh, I just try. And if I fail at it, I fail at it. But you know, if if I I'm, I'm very competitive, like I told you, I I played football growing up, um, and it was it's just one of those things in me. So I saw this, I wanted to try it. And I had some good, I had a great um, support system. Julian <laughs> was one of them. He was the one that uh, mm -hmm. that really pushed me to draw him, draw a Joker. And uh, I thought, you know, this thing looks cool. I'm going to go and try it. So I'm going to try it and see what people think. And if they like it, they, they, they like it. But 
I didn't realize how good it looked until I was done with it. Um, and I, I think I told you at the show, the face, uh, even though that's supposed to be the, the paint that he would have on his face, it's actually the paper and everything else that I drew around it is, is all charcoal graphite and, and just a little bit of elbow grease. So this is, uh, you know, everybody says that Ledger's Joker is like the best Joker. And I, and I understand that some people would say that Nicholson would be right there too, but I think it's hard to, yeah. hard, hard to argue uh, against Ledger. That yeah. was such a dark role and such a dark place where he was coming from. And I think that you captured this perfectly. Uh, just that essence of, of fear and almost like, I don't I just just evil. I mean, yeah, you just don't know, right? It's so awesome. You did a you did an amazing job here. Um uh, look at Ronnie here. What, what's he say? He said, <laughs> I'll pay you to stop doing Dallas Cowboy portraits, though. You could be the best artist in the world, but them cow cowgirls are holding you back, they say. <laughs> oh man, we're getting well, a little sports talk here uh on the on the art show, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean it's uh I'm always down to draw other players. You know, I, I love, I, I was growing up, I was a Raiders fan, uh, Oakland mm -hmm. Raiders, um, you know, uh, Jim Otto, Howie Long, you know, I, I'd love to see those guys and in, in the old school, the, the bruises, the burst, you know, jammed up fingers, the sweat, blood, everything, you know, all that gritty, dirty griminess. I, I love that. And, um, you know, at, at the moment, with the amount of requests I get, I don't really see too many people letting me draw sports athletes, but um, it's just uh, something that I plan and always will want to do. Like Mike Singletary is one of my favorite linebackers. Mm -hmm. um, I would love to draw him um, and just for him to see it and say, you know, decent job and, <laughs> you know, and yell at me and tell me to go run laps or something like that. But, um, you know, and, and coaches too, like Tom Landry, freaking John Madden, you know, drawing guys that just really, that you can tell have a, show a lot of emotion in their photos and, and the love that they have for the game, you know, stuff like that really means a lot. So um, it's on the way. Um, but Dallas Cowboys are always going to be my home team and they're always going to be a part of my gallery of, of uh, pieces. And if, uh, if somebody else lets me draw them, and another athlete, you know, I'm going to do it just as good a job, if not better, than I did before on the other athletes. That's awesome. I see Ronnie is a LT fan. Uh, obviously, being here in the DFW area, I can completely understand that. I don't know why you're going Jets Uni, but that's I'm fine. Like, yeah, I'll, I'll kick it back old school, man. I mean, I would go to college, man. TCU. TCU all the way. All the way. <laughs> Maybe you could do do one from him in the like the Sun Bowl when he's leaping over everybody <laughs> or something like that. I that would, would draw. Be great. That would be great. Now, I'm I'm glad we're talking sports right now because I want to talk about this piece uh, specifically. Brian Bosworth is an absolute legend. Uh, he might be infamous. Uh, he might be famous. He might be infamous. I don't know. It just depends on if you ever seen Stone Cold or not. I really <laughs> don't know uh, how you feel about him uh, personally, but like I can totally see where because you're about my age. I'm going to guess you're around forty, right? Uh, I look like I've been. I look like I'm forty. I'm actually uh, thirty-one. He's 31, folks. I insulted the man right here live on national <laughs> uh, radio. Uh, but I can see where, like, a guy my age would love something like this uh, because, you know, I'm 40. Uh, I'm, I'm, getting, I'm turning 40 uh, real soon, and this is uh, an absolute part of my memory that is stuck in my head. I will never forget Bo Jackson putting Brian Bosworth through the back of the end zone uh, in the kingdom. Uh, but – he was such a legend in Oklahoma. And then, of course, I just mentioned uh, Stone Cold. If you've never seen that movie and you have an hour and a half to kill on a, on a horrible movie, go watch that. Right. It's really good. It but, takes like, every hour and a half that you can. Yeah, exactly. But why did, why did you uh, go with the boss here, man? Because this is great. So we were um, – I've always been a fan of his um, since, you know, back when the hit happened and, and – um, I've always been a fan of his growing up just because of Stone Cold. It was a movie that my my dad and mom really liked, and we got to watch it. We bought that movie like 12 times, recorded it on VHS <laughs> so many times, and and um, 
you know, it was, it was just a good show. And then I got to learn more about him as an athlete and, um, you know, the impact he had on Oklahoma and type of person he was. And, and, uh, and even now, you know, finding out about the, um, you know, the NFL experience that he had. And then right. of course, with the fact that he didn't do that well, mm-hmm. um, he made every negative into a positive. He ended up what owning a clothing company that endorsed his downsides as an athlete. Mm-hmm. Um, and he made a ton of money just, just by selling merch, telling him, telling, showing everybody that he was horrible, you know, and, and, um, He's a smart guy, and, uh, and I would. Uh, I, you just you can't draw an athlete without him being a part of it. Even though he didn't make that big of an impact in the NFL, it's you know it's pop culture right there, man. You know, it's nostalgia. Right, it absolutely is. That is a he. He is a he's a piece of pop culture. He that's a that's a great way to put it. And again, guys my age remember him for a lot of a lot of reasons. And you know, guys who are a generation younger than us. Might not know all that, but they, I mean, I, his legend at Oklahoma still stands out. Steroids or not, you know, uh, I feel like Rick James, cocaine is a hell of a drug. You know, you just can't, <laughs> you can't uh, forget what he did. It's amazing yeah. stuff. It's amazing. I mean, you guys got a, uh, Ronnie and Julian have a little back and forth going over here on the, in the comments. Uh, Ju- Julian wants to see Ronnie uh, in a Cowboys cheerleaders uniform. Uh, we're going to need you to go ahead and get that done for us, David. <laughs> I'll get started on it as soon as I can, I promise. <laughs> definitely going to be on the list of personal pieces to draw. <laughs> uh, one thing that you are working on that I did want to bring up is um, Rob's Oh My God series, Oh My God Horror series. Uh, tell me a, a little bit about that and how you got drawn into it. <laughs> See what so I did? It's kind of a it's kind of a, it's kind of a, like a bad start. Um, and it was my fault, but okay. I, uh, I, I just started out and I was getting a lot of messages. Like I would probably get about six or seven messages almost every hour. Um, okay. when I first started and, um, and you know, I would, I would, I would get a lot of opportunities and, and, um, but I, I was, I was given very few like comic book cover opportunities at the time. Um, and so I was, I did a piece one day that really stood out and it was a punchline. And I remember I was contacted by a couple of people in the industry that are very, very well known and, and, uh, with, with really exciting opportunities. And, and, uh, and I wanted to focus on them quite a bit, but one of the, one of the other individuals that reached out to me, uh, after I had already agreed to take on all these other these these two covers um was rob with oh my god a horror anthology and i told him i would definitely be interested in drawing it don't get me wrong i i definitely want to draw it uh draw something for you um i just didn't really want to take away from the focus that i had on uh on uh at the time and so um you know but rob is is very very you know, when he wants something, he wants it, you know, and he, and he saw a lot of potential in me and he didn't give up on me and he kept messaging me and, and I messaged him back. I think it was like a couple, there was a little bit of a, of a, of a, uh, a lapse in communication for about a couple months. And, um, finally, uh, he had reached out to me again with another opportunity and I had, you know, I felt like this was definitely a great, time for me to go ahead and take on especially the idea he had we met in person talked about it and um i just had a good a great vibe off of of his uh, story and and um and for somebody to be that you know because i I'm, I'm not really well known at all and i'm uh, i'm still growing in the industry and i i love the opportunity and i don't want to take down take say no to anything but for him to to you know put up with me not messaging him the first time and and normally a publisher and creator would just be like hey i'm done i don't want to i'm going to find somebody else who really wants to try it and um you know for him to not do that and stay with it and really really work at getting a hold of my you know work and the attention uh of my uh, uh of what i was able to do at the time or am able to do now he 
you know, I just, I've had a lot of respect for him. And, uh, I mean, I'm definitely not going to say no this time around. I'm going to say yes and, and get started on it. And the idea he gave me was really great. And so pretty soon here, I'll be, I'll be, uh, completed with his work probably in the middle of, uh, of, uh, September, late September. Um, hopefully, uh, a lot sooner than that, but you know, I just, I really couldn't really couldn't turn away from, from that opportunity, especially from somebody like him willing to give me another chance. I'm, uh, forgive me. I'm showing some of Tone Rodriguez's work here, uh, but I don't think it matters because Tone's, Tone's a great artist. But oh. my, my point here is, is Rob has got just like the stable of artists that he's got working on this book. It's amazing. Which, which, which did he pull you in on? Which characters are you doing? So it's a move. It's a, it's a part of his story called Crash. Um, and it's, there's more to it than, um, than really what you would think. But my, uh, subject matter is the individual that stars in the actual co in the storyline itself and to be able to draw something you know it, like almost like a two-faced kind of character type of thing where one side of the face or of the book is going to look completely mm -hmm. like well-groomed individual perfect bones you know cheek structure but then on the other side of the book you know on the other side of his face it's going to look like a crash victim and and um and I think realistically for what I was able to, to do, because the first one was uh, uh, the spider, like just spiders everywhere and really, really dark and, 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 and gory, but beautiful because there's a beautiful woman in a, in a red dress mm -hmm. part of it. And, um, you know, I thought, you know, at the time I was already doing portraits and stuff and I really just wanted to focus on that. So for him to take the time and give me the opportunity to draw this one, you know, this is definitely up my alley. I'm a portrait artist. I love, I love trying to bring, I want you to have trouble looking at something I'm working at a picture and, and a drawing that I've done of that picture. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want you to have trouble deciding which one is which, you know, so I think this will be a pretty cool cover opportunity. I think so too. It, it's a, it's an amazing thing. Uh, if you guys are not from, uh, familiar with Rob and his work, he, he is a, uh, what's the name of the, uh, the, the, is it Equitus? Comics? What is that? Uh, I'm sorry, Rob. I'm doing you wrong. <laughs> uh, uh, Aqu uh, it's uh, Aquatus, Aquatus Comics. Um, yeah, I'm probably yeah. saying it wrong too. I, I can't seem to get it right on my end. But um, but he, it, it's definitely um, it's definitely a, a great company to be a part of. I mean, he's worked with Ryan Kincaid. He's worked Tone a lot. Um, and uh, we're going to be, he's going to be getting more artists coming in board on board. Tiffany grows. I would expect would want to be a part of it. Um, Cause she does a lot of great work, but um, you know, for me, I'm, I'm, I don't know what he saw in me, but I'm glad he saw it and gave me the opportunity. And, and so I'm just going to try to do my best to make sure he's proud. You just keep pushing on, keep doing what you're doing. Cause uh, like Mark says, you're not well known yet. Uh, that I think that's that's right. You're not well known yet. I think it's coming for you, man. You're doing amazing work. I do want to talk about this uh, this Ghost Rider that you did in a CBCS case. This is an old case, uh, but it still looks amazing. Tell me about this piece here. So I uh, man, this one's a tough one too. You're bringing up some good ones. Um, so in Albuquerque, I was uh, there's James. He's a he's one of my mentors. Okay. Um, and uh. In Albuquerque, we were set up, and it was a great show. I mean, it was very slow on certain days, but it was very busy on others. And one of the, a gentleman came up to me by the name of Fred. Uh, he came up, and he was just like super nice. And you can tell he had a patience about him that was just unmatched. And he saw that I was doing a lot of good work, and he was. He didn't know me at all and never heard of me before. And, you know, just random guy. And he just, that just, just showed up at this, at this convention and he does all these drawings of uh, Joker and stuff like that. It's just, I'm a random person, a uh, stranger to him. And he came up and he was just right away. I would love a ghost rider from you. And, uh, hmm. I'm like, okay, well, cool. Yeah. I mean, I can't, I mean, and most of the people that were, they were asking like, uh, a good friend of mine, David Baldaza, was asking about getting a commission done of a of a carnage, and he wanted it <laughs> within the same weekend. And I was like, "Man, I can't do that." 
you know, so, but there were him and another set of people were asking me, but he was like, just whenever, whenever. And I'm like, I, I you know, you never met me before in your life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he was like, well, I, I have a lot of faith in what you could do. And, and he was like, I want to get it graded. I want to do all the stuff. And, and, um, so that was in January. Well, this photo, as you can tell on the date, yeah, it doesn't take me that long to, to, to get him a commission done. It doesn't take me that long to get it, get back graded, but I gave it to CBCS. And I think that with the pandemic starting, it kind of mm -hmm. slowed everything down and, um, I finally got it back. And, and then when I gave it to them, I forgot to sign it. I was oh, like, no. No. I was like, no. <laughs> I was like, you dummy, like, what's wrong with you? Come on. So uh, we get, we're able to get it back. I signed it. Uh, the uh, facilitator was there, um, watched everything as it took place and sent it off. And, and it came back, it came back at nine, six, you always shoot for a nine, eight, but you know, it's, uh, uh, it's still a great piece. And mm -hmm. I finally gave it to him and the photo doesn't do it justice. The, uh, the real, the real thing looks a lot better. You can tell the jackets there and all that good stuff. And and when Fred got it, he was just just completely just shocked and happy. And and the patience of this gentleman was just completely. I've never seen it before. He was just so patient and so understanding and such a kind-hearted person. So I appreciate him. I'm also drawing something for him again now. So <laughs> uh, so it, it was wasn't all too bad that's great that and it's got to make you feel good to have a complete stranger walk up to you and say, Hey, I want you to do this. And then from not knowing him at all, I'm sure that you, I'm, you might even call him a friend now because of, uh, because of the work you did. Oh, yeah. He's, he's a great friend uh, to me. He's, he supported my career and um, in more ways than just monetary, you know, it's just, mm -hmm. uh, just to have somebody like that uh, as a, as a follower and as a friend and, um, it, it means more to me than anything else. So I'm, I'm just like Alan, James, Mark, Ronnie, um, Chris, everybody that's, you know, Cam, uh, you know, everybody that's been a part of my career. Um, I wouldn't be able to do anything or you wouldn't know who I am right. uh, without these guys. So it just, it means a lot. That, that support network is great. Um, I got to ask you about this because we are a collectible show. We talk collectibles. And we've been talking art a lot tonight, and I, that, that's great because that's what I wanted you here for. But I want to know about what you collect. Do you collect comic books uh, now? Is that is that Red Sonia I saw you post like a real thing <laughs> to you, or what's up with that? So I've been I've been kind of uh, you know not getting too overly inundated. The good thing about having good friends, uh, especially like James Dawson, who's here watching. He was the one that always uh, fed it in my mind that don't go crazy spending all this money on keys and number ones, nine eights, this, that. Um, just get what you know that you love and and focus on that. Um, so I, growing up, I remember my dad would really get into into Conan and Red Sonia and and uh, Vampirella, and mm -hmm. that's why I love those characters, man. I'd love to love to work on them one day and. And have a have do a cover for for each each of those characters. Um, that's actually a goal of mine right now. Um, so, uh, but yeah, I mean, I just I collect. Uh, what is it? Uh, back here, you can see in the back. I collect uh, uh, hot toys. I collect mm. McFarlane toys, comic books. I am every bit of what you would see at a comic book show at a convention so just a big nerd it's I'm just a big nerd that's fine we're, we're all nerdy about something <laughs> yeah know? i mean as you soon like as i'm able to this whole wall is going to be full of art i have prints from other artists that i follow and there you go there you go you crazy. you're a nerd about comics and toys i like fried chicken it's cool man we're, we're all a big nerd about something it's I awesome fried chicken as well <laughs> awesome great so uh Let's do this. Let's wrap this up tonight. I got to get my kids to bed, so uh, yeah. please, please don't blame me for that. Uh, everybody, everybody, all my regulars know it's ice cream time, so uh, yeah. let's do this. Where can uh, my listeners and followers and viewers find your work, and how how can they get a hold of you if they, uh, maybe they want to commission a piece? 
So I'm right now I'm in the process of uh, working on my existing commissions, but um, I will be opening my commission list here in September on roughly the middle of September, roughly around September 11th. Um, and so if you'd like to have something personally done for yourself, a custom piece, um, you can reach me at uh, David Sanchez Artist on Facebook. Um, you can friend me on my personal page if you'd like. You can reach me on Instagram. Uh, you can send me an email at dsanchezartist.com. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, dsanchezartist at gmail.com. Uh, I will have a website here set up within the, within the coming months, uh, which it is. I've already got the domain and everything, dsanchezartist.com. So, um, you know, if you ever would like to have something done personally for yourself, if you're interested in the prints of the pieces that you saw today, um, let me know. I can have those mailed out to you. Um, yeah, I mean, that's probably going to be the best ways through Facebook and everything like that. So, Awesome, guys. I just put his uh, Facebook link in the uh, comment section here. So go, go hit him up there. I want to give another shout out to our sponsors tonight. I Typically, I run a ticker. So everybody can see the sponsors. I did not do that tonight on purpose because I wanted to show the art and and, and uh, maintain on that. I uh, so I I hope that my sponsors forgive me. But go check them out at filth, filthbombbreaks.com and pastimemarketplace.com. Again, if you use code Beckett Live at checkout, you can get yourself fifteen percent off an order. All right, man, David, I want you to hang back with me backstage just for a minute. Uh, yeah. When we say goodnight here, I want to talk to you about a quick something uh, off the record. But everyone else. Thank you so much for joining me. That's it for this week uh, in Beckett Live. We do have a great week lined up next week. Don't miss it. Uh, more to come on that on social media. But until next Tuesday, good night. God bless. Take care, guys.